<laughs> having a nice time, but six hours of drinking, now it, it usually ends up a little bit like this. <laughs> right, so a lot of issues that <laughs> all day long, and uh, six hours, it just passes by a blink because of the fact that it, there's so many issues that we have to tackle, and it's really going through mud while you are trying to nurture a growing environment, a supporting environment, because that environment doesn't just fall into place. It actually takes a lot of planning, a lot of logistical nightmares to go through before you know we can actually have a nice meeting room and full attendance. One of the things that we always, uh, one of things, early things, uh, issues that we had to tackle was the treasury. For instance, the treasury, uh, because of the accounting practices of many past treasurers, we realized that our bank account statement can never tally with the financial statement. So it, it just happened that uh, it all because of certain practices. So we realized that from now on, any kind of money that goes out from TM account is going to be through iBanking. Any money that goes in will also be through iBanking so as to have proper accounting. And because TM is one of the most heavily funded clubs in SIM, yeah, we are good. And the school recognizes that we are good. So they do fund us quite a lot. And there's a lot of cash that goes in and out. The food that's outside that needs to be paid. Uh, every kind of logistics needs to be paid. So quite heavy taxing stuff on the treasurer. And that's why every chapter, every expo meeting, my treasurer, who's very capable, will actually come out, come out and present to us how uh, the treasury is happening, what, what's happening in the treasury, what are some of the things uh, that are under-accounted, over-accounted. And for some of us who are just very allergic to accounting, we still do sit through, and this way we actually get to learn a lot about how the funds are managed. And that meant, uh, okay, and that meant that besides that, I, uh, after all those issues, we still realized that our <coughs> school wasn't really complete. Initially, our school we had about nine, nine of us, but over time, uh, Jay, uh, because of some personal commitments, had to leave. And then Benji, because he was having three passports. <laughs> and he had three passports. And he's a Singaporean who has done NS. So he had to be deported to Japan. Yeah, so I, I can see a lot of ladies and a few guys sighing very heavily because of that. But not to worry, we realized that, okay, fine. Last, last ESCO, uh, during the last ESCO recruitment, we had about 20 applicants for eight positions. So I said, okay, you know what? It doesn't matter. SAA position. Let's open it up. I'm pretty sure you're going to have a lot of applicants. But sadly, what happens is that when you talk about SAA, you think about this old guy. And you think about Sergeant at Arms. It's such, a, it's such a boring title. And then the job responsibility of a Sergeant at Arms is mainly really to buy the food, to book the venue, get all the food all prepared, the storage, the cover is all to be, to be settled. That's what a Sergeant at Arms in the Exco does. But, and, uh, and then because of that, when we opened up the applications for Sergeant Arms, I think there was only one brave soul to apply. And a lot of females are not really attracted to this spot. So we decided to rebrand it into the ex-co position of Sergeant Arms to Vice President for Operations. Yes, I work in a bank last time, so <laughs> that's where we got the inspiration for in the sense that SAA is not just gonna be taking care of the logistical stuff, but that person is gonna be very heavily involved as the PDPA officer or the chief information officer, uh, all the data is going to be controlled by that person. And on top of it, my uh, how's it, my SA or the C was that VPO will now be a <coughs> jack of all trades. Well, who said that she's a jack of all trades? Ah, yeah. So my <laughs> VPO as well. We will see later. Where it's also supposed to be a jack of all trades in the sense that if if my VPE vice president for education is is too busy, or if my PR is too busy, my VPO will need to help out with everything. So he or she will be doing almost a little bit of everything, and she's really filling in the gaps that might be filling up. And we have a lot of things in plan, so she will definitely be over stretched up, as you can see the number of hands. And that meant that we actually decided on the person who is to be our next VPO, and that person is, for those members you all know, will be Serene. But she's not here today. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but she's not here because uh, Dobby passed away last night. Uh, RIP, RIP Dobby. No worries. Uh, and uh, because of that, she couldn't be here with us today. But uh, she's she's really hoping that she was she was here. But nobody, so you guys will see her tomorrow. Uh, yeah, over the next weeks. And then we had the vice president for membership position that was also needed to be filled. 
and taking over from Ricky is Ricky's beloved, Miss Luciana. <laughs> so she will be taking care of all the members' welfare, the outings, everything that are very much a focus of our our exco. So now that the whole exco was was settled, everybody had uh, the their job responsibilities and everything. It meant that. Our job had to be done. We had to make sure we continue having the external external chapter meetings. Uh, some of you who were there in the last meeting, we had a barbecue come chapter meeting, so you guys could, you know, give your speeches as people were barbecuing beside you and as there were like you know strangers around just listening to you speak. And uh, we also made sure we had to make sure that there are outings and that chapter meetings are varied, that there's a theme to chapter meetings. So these were some things that we had to ensure as expo to do. And one of the things was that was important was the MCs. Uh, one of our biggest uh, service provisions to SIM is the provision of MCs. Any of the events that you see that are running by the student dev or SIM usually will have a student toastmasters as somebody who's MC that event. Now that is something that uh, I really wanted to ensure. Oh yeah, it's okay. I always go for time. It's fine. <laughs> that is something I really wanted to ensure that uh, we continue providing, and that this year the Exco we planned that. The MCs will not only be just helping SIM, but they'll also be helping out all the different clubs in SIM. If I'm not wrong, some of you who are in other clubs in SIM will know that you guys have a lot of events in SIM, those international clubs. Some of you are MEXIM, MySIM, or Isaac, or YEN, INT. You guys have a lot of events that uh, you all want to publicize. Some of these clubs will resort to class outreaches, where they will have somebody from their club who will actually be forced to go in front of the lecture theater and try and sell the event. And now for many of us, uh, many of those uh, club members who are actually very scared of speaking to the public, they end up not publicizing it very well and they end up, uh, you know, sometimes actually just pissing off the crowd and they will just, you know, walk away. And this is where we felt that as those masters we come in, they could outsource that, that bit of service to us and we can actually provide our MCs to go and do that publicity for them in a way that our members could actually get the experience of speaking to random lecture theatres and also learn how to really sell an event. Even if it's not your event, right, you still need to know how to sell that. You know what I mean, when you're going to work for a bank, you need to sell those products that you know are going to wreak havoc in their lives, you still got to sell it. And this is something that maybe we all could, uh, as in can try starting to learn, is how to sell those events. And that's what my MCs will be doing soon. Uh, from now on, so if you guys have any clubs that are interested to hire our MCs, please let any one of the Exco know. We're all free of charge for now. Uh. <laughs> okay. Now, after all this, we knew that if you're doing so much, you know, we are actually we actually won this award. We actually won a lot of awards. We are the top three recruiters for a quarter, and uh, we actually were one of the more popular clubs. We are we are growing exponentially. We are only 20ish now. We are close to 50. But at the same time, right, whenever you're at the booth, we always have these, these questions. <laughs> like, hey, those master, are you guys a baking club? <laughs> <laughs> and the best, the most common is, what the hell is those masters? The name itself is so confusing to people. And that, that meant that, hey, you know, the expo is doing so much, we're trying to raise, uh, we're trying to do so much for our members, but the publicity is something that is lacking. People still do not know what is Toastmasters? Why is it? Because we don't we don't really have that marquee event where we really publicize Toastmasters. We don't have an event like maybe for what you know INC has a YFS, U Financial Symposium, INC is everywhere and things like that. So we thought this year the Expo should do something that they have never done before. Any other Expo has done before is they actually have a school wide event with uh, speakers, much like U Financial Seminar, where they will come down and try and give value to the students. So we wanted to have this event called Encender, which means to ignite. And we will be having this school event that's targeted about 300 to 400 students. And it, it's really like a, a bunch of speakers who come down and talk about Toastmasters, the importance of communication in life, and the importance of being able to basically communicate. Now, uh, if you guys have been to some other seminars, I'm not saying what or who, you realize the speaker will start talking about, say, for example, financial literacy. And he'll keep talking, and then towards the end, he'll say, okay, but if you want to know anything, you must buy this product. And it becomes like a bit of sales talks towards the end. But we wanted to make sure that it's really about value adding. And the speakers, they only had 40 minutes to really say something. So we knew that we had to get very powerful speakers to come down. And that meant speakers like these. 
basically speakers who have actually shared stages with Richard Branson and Donald Trump, Tony Blair, and who will actually be speaking about topics that are Toastmaster related, how Toastmasters actually helped them in their life, how Toastmasters became a crucial part of their lives. And uh, we have speakers like John Shi, who, we are, who, who has replied that he would like to come down for the event. Uh, he's a very humorous guy. I'm not sure if you guys know Eric Fung or Quentin, Tan, but they're all public speaking trainers. So this is the kind of event that we'll be having in November, and we're booking a lecture theater. And that's when we are hoping that everybody here will actually come on down and really listen through everything. And But really, what is it that, what is it that we are doing all this for? It's really for you guys. Because ultimately, this club has the potential to do a lot more. This club has the has uh, a pool of speakers, has a pool of excellent speakers to tap onto. We are a speaking club. There are 250 Toastmaster Clubs in Singapore, 19,000 Toastmaster Clubs in the world. We have access to a massive amount of resources. And by doing these things, we are just hoping to get some of those resources onto you students so that you guys can continue on with your journey. And since I've spoken up quite a lot of times, I shall, yeah, thank you so much for listening to my opening brief. This is just some of the plans that we have for the Exco. I will talk a little bit more about some other things during the closing speech. Yeah, back to you and...